Hi, I'm Ryan Nickel, CTO at DSA Ocean, and today we want to talk about short and long crested ocean waves. And what does that do and how does it work in ProDSDS? So I've got three different scenarios with different amounts of wave spreading. And wave spreading is what links uh, the effect of how long the crest lengths are in your simulations and your analysis. So everything's the same in these three scenarios. It's a uh, five meter significant wave height, John swap spectrum, um, 50 discrete wave segments uh, making up that uh, C state and the difference is I'm just playing with the wave spreading angle. So for long crested waves all the waves are going in the same direction. There's no spreading at all and for medium spreading I've used a wave spreading angle of 45 degrees. Um, what that means is all of our waves that are forming our, our spectrum are going to be evenly distributed roughly uh, plus or minus uh, uh, in a range plus or minus 45 degrees from that mean heading. And then we have the default value of wave spreading uh, of 90 degrees. Um, and both of those with spreading have a, a cosine spreading function on. So let's see what that really looks like, though. Um, it's one thing to talk about this and another thing to see it. So I've got three examples here. Here we have the long crested wave. So as the waves pass from the left to the right, you can see they, they literally have a very long crest lengths. Um, you get that irregular wave surface, um, but everything's moving in the same direction. In the medium spreading case here, um, you can see sort of longer crest lengths, but still some um, differences in the way the waves are propagating, slightly different headings. Um, still, it's very focused. Um, and then finally, with the default spreading function here of, of 90 degrees, um, you're seeing much shorter crest lengths. Um, still, like quite a lot of activity um, in the sea surface in an irregular pattern in the, the water. So, you know, what's, what's the implication of using one or the other, and what does this really mean? Uh, I mean, obviously, it, it requires a lot of judgment, and, uh, and, and you really need to know the characteristics of what the specific project site you're considering is. But generally speaking, as I think you might imagine, the longer, longest crested waves is, you know, it's kind of rare that you'd really have something so perfectly lined up across, you know, such a wide area. So in a way, it is a bit of a, it can be a conservative way to, to really see what happens to your system. Um, certainly for large floating structures, it's going to make a very, you know, coherent floating response, like in, in roll uh, for a large floating system. And you could get some pretty big motions and big mooring loads out of that. So, um, you know, in a way that's that can be conservative. Um, for a lot of um, uh, wind-driven storm uh, scenarios in the ocean, you will get like a fair amount of spreading happening. So that's you know one big reason why you see this as a default in Proteus DS. But of course, you can change that and, and do what you like. And you know, moderate crested waves is sort of a way of balancing you know a, a bit of a conservative measure. Um, uh, between having the longest crested and short crested waves. So mm, it depends, of course, and you know every project and every site location is going to be a little bit different, but you know you may find that this is maybe a little bit a little bit more realistic for what you see in reality. Um, uh, and of course, on the other end of the spectrum, we have um, uh, you know something that's maybe not quite as as realistic, but good as a conservative measure if you really want to look at things that way. All right, thanks for watching.